Kuat is one of the most important planets in the entire Star Wars galaxy, home to Kuat Drive Yards, a major production facility of the Empire, responsible for not only the continued production of Star Destroyers and really most of the fleet, but also the Empire's many Star Dreadnoughts. Securing the Kuat Drive Yards was one of the New Republic's first major goals in both Legends and Canon. We've already covered the Canon battle, today we will discuss Legends. But first a bit of history. Although Kuat was always part of the Republic, during the Clone Wars, the Sector's sizable defense fleet was nationalized by Palpatine and formally brought under the control of the Republic's navy. Even at this point, when large capital ships were rare, the Kuat Drive Yards were protected by several dreadnoughts and battlecruisers. I've talked about these in a previous video, which I'll link above. What's most impressive is that Kuat maintained this sizable defense force even while producing gargantuan vessels for the Republic. After the Clone Wars and the transition of the Republic, control over Kuat was tightened by the Empire, but the tradition of a sizable Kuati defense fleet, created and maintained by the planet and the shipyard, was continued. After the Battle of Endor, the New Republic pushed heavily at the core, taking planets like Coruscant. Still, despite two attempts, the New Republic failed to capture the important KDY shipyards. Nonetheless, because of a bleak outlook for an Imperial future within the core, factions of the Empire pulled ships away to heavily fortified areas in the Rim, leaving the defense to the KDY sector fleet and famed Admiral Terran Rogris. Still, these defenses were not to be underestimated. They included a dozen plus Star Destroyers, three battle cruisers, the Event Horizon, Stellar Halo, and Luminous, and a Dreadnought, the Aurora. A plan for control of the system was engineered by by, among others, General Kraken of the New Republic's intelligence agency. Over several months, astromech droids were covertly inserted onto Kuwati defense ships. As the assets were in place, the rebels massed a fleet in the nearby Horthav system, a smaller, hidden A-Wing squadron commanded by Tycho Selku and called Surprise Squadron was also in a separate, nearby system. The A-Wings, armed with experimental ion cannons, jumped into Kuat and strafed several of the ships. Without strong point defense cannon, escort vessels, or launched fighters, the Luminous and three Star Destroyers were temporarily disabled. As this was happening, the smuggled droids, now a part of the KDY fleet, locked down the Event Horizon, great name for a battlecruiser by the way, as well as four Star Destroyers, and pointed their guns at the rest of the fleet. With eight ships put out of commission in some form, New Republic leadership contacted the directors of KDY. Although the group was under control of the Empire, it was still technically a corporation. The stock obviously was worth almost nothing, as it did not pay dividends and you could not control KDY itself, but it was still technically available. The New Republic had been buying all available stock up. Again, it had no practical purpose because KDY was an asset of the Imperial military. However, it did give the corporation's directors a somewhat defensible out to defect. The New Republic controlled in fact 34% of the corporation legally, and several of the directors agreed that working under the New Republic would be preferable to the Empire. One reason for this was the fact that the New Republic had already showed their strength by neutralizing a large portion of the defense fleet, but more importantly, a New Republic task force was stationed nearby, while most Imperial forces were a few days away. In the end, KDY agreed to peacefully join the New Republic. This was a major win for the new government, as they managed to to secure not only the shipyards, but also three battlecruisers, 12 Star Destroyers, a Dreadnought, and perhaps most importantly, the Eclipse Super Star Destroyer, which was still under construction. All of this without a drop of blood spilled, as even the Imperial officers aboard the Kuwati ships were allowed to retreat. However, the major victory was significantly lessened. Undercover Imperial officers had planted explosives within the shipyards. They were activated, causing massive damage to the ring's superstructure. What's more, the Aurora Dreadnought and the Stellar Halo Battlecruiser were set to hyperspace jump into a near by star. Finally, the agents secured the Imperial designers who had been kept on station and escaped to the outer rim aboard the Eclipse. The rest of the ships, including the two remaining battlecruisers, presumably remained at Kuat to protect the shipyards, which although now seriously less efficient and productive, were still a very valuable shipbuilding resource, something desperately needed by a New Republic struggling to consolidate power. Kuat would change hands again a few years later when it was re-seized by the Empire during Operation Shadow 
hand. During this time, it constructed the Eclipse to Dreadnought and began work on the Sovereign Superstar Destroyers, which were meant to represent a new era of Imperial rule. However, after the reborn Emperor's death and the Bisc Cataclysm, Kuat would cede to the New Republic. It would remain a vital military asset throughout the remaining years of the Galactic Civil War and until the Yuuzhan Vong War and beyond. But what do you think of these events? Are you disappointed that the massive Kuwati defense fleet never really saw any action? Would you have expected the battle for something as important as the KDY shipyards to be a bit more major of an event? I mean, this never appeared in any of the novels or comics and all comes from the Essential Guide to Warfare. Let me know all of that and more down in the comment section. As always, thank you so much guys for tuning in today's video. Until next time, may the force be with you.